Hey guys, today's video lecture topic is protein synthesis, and I'm going to warn you that this is one of the more complicated topics that we cover throughout the year. So, as always, fill in your notes organizer, make sure you answer every question, and spend some extra time on this topic if you need to, you know, going over the video lecture again, or clicking through some of the tutorials I'm going to post for you. So, like I said, the topic today is protein synthesis, which is the process of building proteins. Lots of steps today. Okay, we're going to start with the big picture, and the big picture is actually called the central dogma of biology, this really big idea that all of biology is surrounded around. And the central dogma of biology says that DNA is read by RNA, which then travels to the ribosome to make proteins. So DNA carries the instructions, those instructions are read by RNA, and then they are made into proteins at the ribosome. And I'm going to keep coming back to this to so make sure you understand that. We start with DNA, we use it to make RNA, RNA is used at the ribosome to make proteins. All right, so if we're going to talk about RNA today, then let's spend some time making sure we know the differences between DNA and RNA. So DNA, you should know by now, is a double helix. It's double-stranded. Its sugar is deoxyribose. That's where the D in DNA comes from. Its nitrogen bases are adenine, thiamine, cytosine, and guanine. Its location is in the nucleus. Now, RNA is single-stranded. Its sugar is ribose. That's where the R in RNA comes from. It has four nitrogen bases. Three of them are the same as DNA, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. But instead of thymine, we have a base called uracil. It's still a pyrimidine, just like thymine is, but it's, it's slightly different, okay? So uracil instead of thymine. Now, because RNA is single-stranded, it's, it's actually small enough to leave the nucleus through the nuclear membrane. So it travels all throughout the cell. Okay, so here's the structure of DNA. You can see the differences here. Again, in RNA, single-stranded, ribose, able to leave the nucleus, we have the nitrogen base uracil. In DNA, we have the nitrogen base uh, thymine. There are three types of RNA. Messenger RNA, which we're going to spend the most time on, mRNA, it acts as a messenger. It carries the recipe that's found in DNA all the way to the ribosome where the proteins are going to be made. Ribosomal RNA makes up part of a ribosome. A ribosome is, is literally just ribosomal RNA and jumbled up proteins together. And then the last type of RNA is transfer RNA or tRNA, and it transfers or carries amino acids to the ribosome. Remember, proteins are made up of amino acids joined together. So those amino acids are brought to the ribosome by the transfer RNA. Okay, so again, back to the central dogma. The central dogma of biology says that we start with DNA, we use it to make RNA, RNA is read to make proteins. So the first thing we have to do is we need to take, start with the DNA where the recipe is for a protein and, and use it to make a molecule of RNA. And that process is called transcription. Okay, so big picture transcription is taking a molecule of DNA and using it to make a molecule of messenger RNA. So if DNA carries the recipe for proteins, but proteins are made at the ribosome, then there has to be a process of copying down that recipe at grandma's house, right, the nucleus where DNA is, and getting it to your house where you're going to make the cookies, the chocolate chip cookies or the proteins, okay? So big picture, DNA use it, being used to make a molecule of messenger RNA. That's transcription. So if it's dealing with DNA, this is taking place in the nucleus because that's where DNA is found. And this is happening because DNA carries the recipe or instructions for the building of a protein, but it can't leave the nucleus. And yet proteins are made at the ribosome. So there has to be a way to copy down the recipe, and that is transcription. So it copies down the recipe into a molecule of messenger RNA because RNA can leave the nucleus. So how does this happen? Let's get into the details. Well, first of all, we have to unzip a gene. So the same uh, molecule that, or the same enzyme that unzips DNA in replication is going to unzip DNA in transcription. That is DNA helicase. So DNA helicase unzips a gene. A gene is a segment of DNA that carries the instructions for a protein. Think of it as one recipe. One gene is a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Another gene is a recipe for uh, pumpkin pie. Okay, so each gene contains a recipe for a protein. The enzyme that is going to be responsible for building the molecule of RNA during transcription is going to be RNA polymerase. So we learned about DNA polymerase, which builds DNA. RNA polymerase uses the exposed gene sequence on the DNA molecule to build a molecule of messenger RNA. So RNA polymerase makes the, the RNA in transcription. So if this was our exposed gene, Okay, this was the sequence being shown by the DNA. What would our RNA sequence be that's built by RNA polymerase? Pause this and write what you think it is, 
and then press play and see if you got it correct. So our messenger RNA sequence would be UCG, AGG, CUA, blah, blah, blah. Okay, where did I get these letters from? Well, remember, adenine in DNA pairs with thymine, but when you're building a molecule of RNA, there is no thymine. Instead, you have uracil. So you know if you have a sequence that has U's, you're looking at a molecule of RNA. You know if you have a sequence that has T's, you're looking at a molecule of DNA. Okay, so thymine, if it's exposed on the DNA, is still going to pair with adenine. Cytosine is still going to pair with guanine, but anytime there's an adenine, instead of thiamine, we're going to have uracil. Okay, here's another one. It's not on your note sheet, but uh, see if you can just mentally figure out what the answer is. Pause it. Okay, so again, using Shargoff's rules, we're going to have this as our RNA sequence following transcription. Okay, now the DNA and RNA, you notice in the sequence that I just showed you, I kind of chunked them by threes. That is because DNA and RNA are read three bases at a time. That sequence of three bases is called a codon. So a codon is a three base sequence that codes or signals for a very specific amino acid. So now let's talk about amino acids. There are 64 possible codons, okay, combinations of three bases. There are 20 different amino acids. So some amino acids are coded for by several um, codons. Now remember, amino acids join together to form proteins. A protein is a chain of amino acids. There are 11 amino acids that your body can make. There are 9 amino acids that your body cannot make. The 9 that your body cannot make are called essential amino acids. If your body can't make them, where do you think they come from? Okay, see if you can figure out the answer to that question because that's going to be a bonus when you do your notes check. Okay, where do essential amino acids come from if your body can't make them? So, let's just uh, break this up. If your RNA sequence is this, it would get read three bases at a time. Okay, those are called codons. So, these would be your three codons. You're going to use this chart here to figure out what would be the amino acids that are signaled by these particular codons. And the way you read this chart is by starting in the middle and working your way out. So our first codon is UCG. So we start with U in the middle, we go to C, we go to G. That particular codon is signaling for serine. The next codon, AGG, we start in the middle, we work our way out. So A, G, G, that signals for arginine. And then CUA, start in the middle, C, U, A, that signals for leucine. Okay, so those three codons would be signaling for serine, arginine, and leucine. So how do we get to those amino acids? Well, that's what comes next. So, so far we did the first half of our central dogma. We used a molecule of DNA to make a molecule of messenger RNA because even though DNA carries the recipe, it can't leave the nucleus, but RNA can. So now that we've made our molecule of messenger RNA, we have to translate it into a protein. We have to build a protein. So that's translation. So transcription was using DNA to make messenger RNA. Translation is taking that messenger RNA and using the instructions to build a protein. So mRNA to protein. Where is this happening? Well, where is protein? Where are proteins made? It's made at a ribosome in the cytoplasm. Why is this happening? It's happening because the make, making of proteins use the instructions from the mRNA message. So at the ribosome, the mRNA is translated and used to build a protein. How is this happening? All right, this is very detailed. You need to write these steps um, as detailed as you can. Okay, don't short, don't shorthand this because this is one of those things where like you're, it's gonna mean nothing to you until you have that light bulb moment. And the only way you're gonna have that light bulb aha moment is by spending time with it. So we already made our mRNA molecule in the nucleus. The mRNA molecule is going to leave the nucleus and enter the cytoplasm where it is then going to attach to a ribosome. The mRNA molecule is going to be read by the ribosome three bases or one codon at a time. Each codon is going to signal for a very specific amino acid. So copy that down, pause if you need to. So each codon is going to signal for a specific amino acid. Where are those amino acids going to come from? Well, the amino acids are transferred to the ribosome by transfer RNA. So the transfer RNA or tRNA transfers that signal the amino acid to the ribosome. How do we know it's bringing the right amino acid? Well, 
transfer RNA has a three base sequence on it called an anticodon. And the anticodon on transfer RNA is it complements the mRNA codon and ensures that you're bringing the correct amino acid. So if our codon on the mRNA molecule is AGU, the anticodon would be UCA and it would be bringing the correct amino acid to the ribosome. So this continues to happen. The next amino acid is transferred, the next amino acid is transferred, the next amino acid is transferred, the amino acids join together with peptide bonds, and then this happens until a stop codon is reached. Okay, remember that, tr that chart you just saw? There are certain codons that are stop codons. Okay, and that says the protein has been built. A protein is also called a polypeptide chain, poly meaning many, peptide re referencing the peptide bonds between amino acids. So many amino acids join together to form a polypeptide chain or a protein. Once the stop codon is reached, we've built our protein, the protein gets released wherever it goes in the cell. Okay, so make sure you have this chart uh, filled out on your notes organizer. Take a second to um, fill out each term. And then there is a chart number 16. See if you can figure out where the terms go, okay? You need to at least attempt that. You will not be able to use your notes unless you have that chart filled in. I'm gonna post this tutorial on the blog. This goes through the steps of um, protein synthesis. Okay, take the time to click through that. I promise it will help you. So now, what happens if something goes wrong? Okay, a change in the genetic sequence is called a mutation. Okay, any change in a sequence is called a mutation. Remember, if a mutation happens in a somatic cell, that's going to affect you, the individual, because that's your body cells, but it's not going to be passed on to your future offspring, the next generation. Mutations that occur in gametes, sex cells, can be passed on if, if the egg or sperm containing the mutation happens to be the cell that gets fertilized, and then you're going to see that mutation in all of the offspring cells. Okay, you should understand the difference there. How, why mutations in gametes are passed on and mutations in somatic cells are not. There are two types of mutations. A gene mutation results from a change in a single gene. So remember, a gene carries the recipe for a protein. So if there's a mutation in a gene, it's going to affect the protein that gets made. There are also chromosomal mutations, where you have changes in whole chromosomes. So a section of a chromosome gets deleted, a section of a chromosome gets inserted. Okay, these are examples of chromosomal mutations. We're gonna focus on gene mutations for a second. If a, if a mutation in a gene happens at one base, so you have an A where there was supposed to be a C, or a G where there was supposed to be a uh, T, that is called a point mutation or a substitution, where one base is substituted for another. That can affect the protein that is made. And then the other type of mutation is called a frame shift mutation. This happens when a base is either inserted or added to a sequence or deleted from a sequence where it was supposed to be there. Okay, I want you to see the difference and impact of the two. So if a, a base is substituted, a point mutation, several things can happen. So this is what it was supposed to be. If a point mutation occurs, you have several options. In this case, no matter the change, you still uh, signal for the amino acid tyrosine, so you still build a normal protein. It's called a silent mutation, no impact. Sometimes, though, it can cause a stop codon to appear too early, which means your protein is going to be incomplete. That's called a nonsense point mutation. Or you can have a mutation that, that signals for a different amino acid than it's supposed to, which means you're going to have an altered protein, and that's called a missense mutation. So obviously, point mutations can have different impacts. A frame shift mutation, okay, if this is what the sequence is supposed to be, if you insert a base somewhere where it's not supposed to be, then it's going to alter the protein from that point on because it shifts the reading frame of the ribosome. That's why it's called a frame shift mutation. If you delete a base where it's supposed to be, it's going to alter the sequence of three bases, which is going to affect every amino acid from that point forward. Okay, obviously frame shift mutations are going to have a much more significant impact than a point mutation or a substitution. Okay, so describe the impacts of those different mutations. And again, spend some time on those tutorials if you need some extra help because this is a difficult topic. No one will say that it's not. All right, hope you're having a good day. Make sure you have that complete.